Yes. It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hello, and welcome to Northwood's Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and this is my special assistant, <laughs> the lovely Miss Callie Alley's. Callie, come here. Oh, oh, oh. Sweet, come here. Get over here. Get in position. Come here, come here, come here. Over here. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Turn around, turn around, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, crunch, crunch, crunch. On today's episode, we're gonna be making lots of rhubarb uh, products. And we're gonna do some canning too. And first, we're gonna be making my Blue Ribbon uh, Rhubarb Jam. Now, this has won Blue Ribbons before at the Hennepin County Fair and the Minnesota State Fair. And so I'll be showing you how to do this. Of course, I got my hot water bath boiling away here and I've got my jars. Now that fits seven, so I'm gonna put, so I cleaned seven jars. I'm not, I can't quite remember if the recipe filled up seven jars or not. I think it only did five, if I remember right. But anyway, you wanna make sure that you wash your jars thoroughly. And you wanna check the edges to make sure there's no nicks or cuts because that's gonna interfere on the seal and it won't seal properly. And it's not gonna win in competition if it's not sealed. And, it would uh, cause sanitary conditions too. You can get food poisoning too at home. So these are all clean now. And you gotta remember to have to wash and that's gonna warm them up. Do not put, uh, if you've been sitting in your basement, whatever, or in a closet, do not put the cold glass in the hot water. Hello, it's gonna crack and break on you. So what you wanna do is wash them in warm water, rinse them off completely so that they're warmed up, they're not ice cold. And what you can do is, Lift up the wire basket, set all your jars in there, and then just put them in. I like to just take and just tip them in one at a time. And I just put it in on an angle to slightly fill up the jar with the hot water. And just slowly put that in there. And that works just fine also. And while these are heating, we're gonna make the jam. Now for this, you wanna use your Dutch oven and make sure you have a heavy duty one. Don't use those tin and aluminum ones because they're gonna, it's gonna scorch and burn your jam. You don't wanna do that. So we're gonna have our Dutch oven here and we're gonna have three cups of freshly cut rhubarb. Now, here's the other secret. Make sure it's fresh rhubarb. Springtime that first came up, that's your best rhubarb to uh, cook. If you wait till summer, you can still cook rhubarb, but it's gonna be older, it's gonna be more woodier, and you're not gonna have that fresh taste to it. And that's important in judging because they want that fresh taste. So you wanna get your rhubarb as of the taping now. This is a mid-April. So we got that. Now we're gonna put in three quarter cups of water. And we're gonna let this come to a boil. I'm gonna cook this off for about two minutes or until the rhubarb is nice and tender. Okay, now our rhubarb is nice and tender. Let this boil for two minutes. So now that that's done boiling, we're gonna be adding our um, shirjo. This here is our pectin, and this is the liquid pectin. Now you wanna have the liquid for this recipe. There's different reasons for different pectins. This dissolves better for different flavors. This is a tartar one. It's already mixed up. It's, I think there's a little lemon juice already in this one. Anyway, but that's just what the recipe calls for. So this has uh, uh, three cups of our prepared fruit. And we just pour in our liquid pectin. Squeeze that in, because you want to make sure you get all that in there. 
Hot, 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 Cali Ellis. Now we mix this up and bring this back to a full rolling boil. That means it boils. When you stir it, it's still boiling. That's a rolling, a rolling boil. And then you, that's called a hard boil. And you want to let that boil for one minute. Constantly stir this so it doesn't stick or burn. It's boiling, time it, one minute. Making jams and jellies is so easy. It's, it is, it's very easy. It's not hard at all. Everybody gets kind of leery about it and everything else. Well, it's probably because you've never done it before. And if you just follow these simple uh, procedures, it's very easy to do. And now, when this minute's up, we're going to be adding five cups of sugar. Got a few seconds, Kelly. Yeah. She's watching. She's stay, stay in her distance. She knows better. <laughs> Uncle always cooking. She's got to stay a little bit back. She don't get burnt. No. And that's our one minute. And then we just add our five cups of sugar. And five. That's a lot of sugar for rhubarb jam. Well, it's an extremely tart, tart, bitter, bitter. You want rhubarb taste, I can crunch into it. It's very sour. That's why you need a lot of sugar. Of course, I can sample the taste, but I can't really eat it as far as spreading it on a you know, full serving, because I'm diabetic and I gotta stay away from that. I do make sugar-free jam, so maybe we'll uh, do that for another episode. Because there's a sugar-free pectin that they do make, and then you don't have to uh, use sugar, or you can make a sugar-free pectin and add a little sugar. So you know, at all, you want to use like real sugar when you're adding sugar to sugar-free pectin when you're making jellies, because you want that clear, crystal clear color. Now we're just waiting for this to come back to a rolling boil, and when it gets to another rolling boil, we let that boil hard for one minute. And then we're going to take and fill our jars. So we'll just wait until this comes back to a boil. And before I forget, which is quite easy to do, you want to add a few drops of red food coloring. This is going to make it much more redder because of the rhubarb is more of a grayish tanner color. It's not that appetizing looking. So you want to add some food coloring to that. And it's not cheating. Take a look at any jam that you buy, you'll see in the label, FDNC, red color dye number two or three or four, whatever. It's just an enhancement. It's not cheating. <laughs> but you don't want to overdo it because you don't want to have a dark red because then you're going to lose points if it's too dark a red. Okay, that came to a full rolling boil. We did that for one minute. Now we just turn that off and let that sit. And after it comes down, then you can take and you uh, skim off the foam. Now, get back to our jars. And we just take these out. And we're gonna put these on a cookie sheet. Because as we fill these and we spill, we don't want to get the countertop all messy. Plus, with that red food cutter coloring in there, we don't want to stain the countertop either. And if you do, you know, if you need a little Clorox bleach, now take it right out. But it's just uh, a tidier way. And it works really good too. So we just take all these jars out and set them on the on our cookie sheet. Now when I skim mine, use a metal spoon. And then you can just go through and skim off all that foam. That's why you want to let it sit for a little bit. Because that when it kind of sort of cools off, it's easier to skim off that foam. 
and the metal spoon makes the foam stick to it better rather than a spatula or a wooden one. And when filling up your jars, you want to go to one eighth of an inch from the top. Oh, these are still hot. Which is, you got the rims, see? In the jars here. The one on the bottom is half an inch. Next one's a quarter inch. And the eighth of an inch is where it starts to, where the rim first starts to come down. It's right near the top. And you want to have that exact headspace in competition. Otherwise, out the window it goes. Without even tasting it. Your first competition, ouch. Your first um, series of judging is appearance. And they just look at everything. They look to see if it's a nice color. They look to see if you got the knife, the exact headspace on the top. They look to see if the seal is not, uh, they look to see if it is sealed. If it's not sealed, out the window it goes. So there's a lot of things they look at when judging. It's not just the taste. Because I've gotten thrown out before even tasting. Many a times. And you just learn from your mistakes. Because they usually give you, your, your critiques are written out for you so you know what was wrong with it. And then we just go around and fill up our jars. What I usually like to do is fill them up as close as possible. And then I'll go back with the spoon and then get the exact line. And if you still have labels left on your jars from last year, they usually come off when you wash them in your soap and water, but not always. And so what I do is, you know, after, I try to take them off as best I can with soap and water. But if they don't come off, it's no big deal. When you process them, you take them out of the boiling water, you just set them down to cool, just take a razor blade, and when they're wet like that, zoom, 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 slides right off. Okay, now those are filled to the, filled to the rim. And now you want to take a wet rag and wipe off any excess jam that may be on the top or on the side of the rims, because this will, sir, will keep the lid from sealing. So you want to make sure you wipe that off completely. Now this last one, I'm not going to be worried about it. It's too much. There's not enough in there, but I'm still going to seal it. And that I'll put in the refrigerator when I'm all done because that'll be at home use and I can use that up within a week right away and, I'll be, and you'll be fine. So if they don't seal, you can just stick it in the refrigerator. You don't have to throw it out. Just eat it up within a week. Now here's another tip. I only got, well, I got one, two, three, four, five. No, I did get five. This is my magnetic wand. Put it into the ring, grab the lid, just like that. Swirl and twirl in the hot boiling water for just a few seconds. Now, what a lot of people do, and the instructions call for this, is you lay your lid and rings in a shallow, like a frying pan skillet with water in there. And then you take and put your rings and lids into the bottom of the pan. And you let them soak there, whatever, until you get ready to do it like I'm doing now, like until you can cover them. I don't like to do that because of this rubber ring on the bottom that seals on the lid. If you leave it in that water too long, it's gonna melt. And then you'll, your product won't, your jars won't seal them. So since this is boiling water, we just want to heat these up. And that's all you want to do even when you put them in the pan. Is this, you want to heat them up. As, as long as it's boiling water, I can just put them in there just for a few seconds like that. And that's going to heat them up. And it's not going to melt the rubber ring underneath the lid. And it helps to give it the heat, it helps will expand. And that uh, rubber is going to get moistened and it makes a better seal. I find it much nicer this way. I got lots of blue ribbons, so I'm doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> and these I just put on loosely for right now. 
and then I'll tighten them up here in just a second. Now I go. Now I can take and, and tighten them. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, screw them on extremely tight. Just a nice snug fit. And now we just put these in, back into the hot water bath. With the lid off, it'll stop boiling. So after we put these in, you want to cover them up and bring it back to a boil and time it for 10 minutes. That's all it is, is 10 minutes. And when you put these in there, in a hot water bath, you got the slots in there to put your jars and that holds it into place. The thing is, you don't want the jars touching each other in a hot water bath because you want the heat from the water to circulate around all the jars. So don't let them touch, otherwise they won't seal. And they might crack and break on you too. In a pressure cooker, they can touch each other, that's no big deal. But hot water bath, you don't want the jars touching each other. That's why they have the racks in there and that keeps them separate from touching. So we'll bring this back to a boil and then we'll time these for 10 minutes and we'll take them out and we'll put them on our countertop on a towel to dry and then you let them sit. Overnight is best for at least 24 hours. So they cool down and then you'll start snapping away, sealing. Don't disturb them. Once you find a place to let them sit, and they'll seal on their, on their own. Don't have them in a breeze, in front of a cool fan, air conditioner, a cold breeze from the windows. As soon as that cold air hits those hot jars, crack, it's gonna break. So keep it in a draft-free place that's warm and not cold. And then that'll be our rhubarb jam. Right, Kelly? Oh, it's simple the fold. Okay, our 10 minutes are up. We'll just take and walk these over to your towel. You want a towel because you don't want to place the jars directly onto the countertop because the heat in your cold countertop will make them crack. So you always put them on a towel. And that's all we got. And then we'll just take and let these sit overnight. And they'll start popping, click, 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 popping away, boom, boom. And just don't disturb them. Don't touch them. Just let them sit there. Don't let them play around with the rims and don't try to touch them and press them in. If they did, let them sit overnight and they'll seal. If they don't the next day, then just make sure you use that jam up within a week so it doesn't spoil. And that's our rhubarb jam. Blue ribbon prize winning jam. Mmm. Is that right, Callie? Oh, she just watching. Okay, now we're gonna go on to another rhubarb jam, and this is going to be a rhubarb orange jam. Blue ribbon, uh, state fair last year. And I believe, did I, did I get the county fair, Kelly? I think I made the rhubarb after the, after the fair, county fair, I think I, but I did get the state fair. We're gonna try again. You can try as many as three times before they knock you out of, comp out of competition. <laughs> Then you gotta try something else, another category. But anyway, so I cut up my rhubarb, and for this we need two and a half pounds, which is four, eight, nine, ten cups of fresh rhubarb. That's in the pot. Next, I need the zest of half an orange, and I got this at the store, and I weighed it out medium-sized oranges. This is worth two oranges and you need half an orange, that'd be a fourth of this. And then we'll put this right into the pot. And then we're going to put the juice in 
and we need a, at least a cup of juice. And if you can't get a full cup, then just fill the rest with water or just use regular orange juice. And then the juice goes in the pot, and I'm just going to use a little sieve just to catch any of the seeds or pulp. So I don't need all those floaters in there. Especially don't want to do it for competition. They're picky. They're really, really picky. And now we just take and do this just like we did the other rhubarb. Bring this to a boil. And then we'll let it boil for about two or three minutes until it's tender. And then we'll add our pectin to that. Bring it to a, roll, a full rolling boil for one minute. Then we'll add six cups of sugar to this recipe. Bring that back to a boil. And then we'll just ladle it into our jars. And so let me get more jars ready and we'll get back to our orange rhubarb jam. I remember one year at the fair when I was bringing in my jams and jellies, my canned goods. I do really good at canning, really good. One guy's always beating me, but he doesn't do the jams and jellies, and that's where I get a little edge on him. <laughs> but I remember one time though, I brought in my canned goods, and one of the volunteers there, she was asking me, she was, oh Roy, we were waiting for you to show up, because I always come in at the last minute, because I'm always cooking and baking up, up until the last minute. But anyway, I brought in my canned goods, and she was like, oh, we're waiting for you to show up. You always have such pretty display. You always make our display look so pretty. Because I always have these different colors for my jams and jellies. And she likes the variety in the display case when she sets them up. I thought that was nice. And again, remember now, to wipe the rims, the threads on the side and the top rim. Want to get rid of all that syrup and jam. Careful, that's really hot. I'm so used to it though. I got what they call the cook's fingers. So I do this in the restaurant business too. I mean, not make jam, but touching things with my hands. So I'm, I'm so used to the heat. I'm not as heat sensitive to items that most people are. But still, this is very hot, so just be careful. The glass can retain heat very easily. And again, we're going to take and just dip the lid, lid with the ring. Just give it a couple of swirls and twirls in the hot boiling water. Place that on top. And slide that on. And again, just a brief snug fit. Nothing really tight. Now I've got, for one instance, this jar is a quilted jar. That's not going to go in competition. They don't want that. They want the smooth glass jars. They don't want any designs on the, on the jar at all. Another thing, I had an old lid. It's still good, but it's an old lid with a new, an uh, old ring with a new lid. So the, the lid's silver and the ring's gold. That's from a different year. They won't take that. <laughs> they won't. Even if it's gorgeous and pretty and everything falls into place. Nope, out the window it goes. Told you, they're very picky about competition at the state fair. In fact, I even take and get so OCD about it. I'm not, but that's what you gotta do for competition is I'll take in the day of comp when I bring them in, kind of like a spit shine, but what I do is I take Windex and spray them and polish them up and everything else. Don't polish them, but you don't want any residue left on the jar or the lid. So I'll just take Windex and spray them and wipe them off with paper towels. I mean, it gets, people get, they play for blood at the fair, let me tell you. But I don't see Marjorie in doing any canning. I, you know, she does all the baking, but I've never seen her in canning. 
I could be wrong, but anyway. So now I will put the lid back on, because if it's open kettle, that don't, they, you can't do that in competition. So now we gotta bring that back to a boil, and that'll be another 10 minutes. And then we'll have our orange rhubarb jam. And then that's it. And that's our rhubarb orange jam and regular rhubarb jam. Hope you enjoy these as much as we do. Well, Callie, how was that? Oh, there's a snap. Oh, ceiling. Yeah, it's working. Oh. Well, thank you for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed as much as we had fun making everything. We got our rhubarb jam and our rhubarb orange jam, and I hope you enjoy those recipes and enjoy the uh, jam too. They're so good. And remember for your best jam to use a fresh rhubarb that just came up out of the ground. The younger, the better, the more flavor it has. Well, Callie, let's see who wrote us this week. And if you have any questions for us here at the Northwoods Cooking Show, write us at the Northwoods Cooking Show at yahoo.com, and we'll get your question on the air, and Callie gets her treat. Right, Callie Alleys? Let's see who wrote us this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get in position. Yeah, in position, girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you hear your feet. Oh, yeah. That's so nice. Oh, yeah. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh. Dear Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, I'm having problems making my cookies to seem to be more uniform and shape all the same. Do you have any suggestions for me to have more perfect cookies? Sign Angie of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hello, Ann Arbor. Yeah, guys. Yes, Angie. What I like to do is use a little cookie scoop. These are those um, ice cream scoopers. They come in different sizes. I use a larger one, the third cup one for my muffins. And these smaller ones I use for my cookie dough. This doesn't uh, make them perfect. What it does, it gives you the exact portion of dough and just scrape down the inside of your bowl and plop it out. And you can take and roll it if you have to roll it into a ball or just leave it plopped down and take a jar or a glass and, and smash down if you want to flatten it. What this does, it gives you the same portion so that when you bake your cookies, they all look, they all look exactly alike. And it's because you got the same amount in every scoop. By using the tablespoons or teaspoons and scraping them off, you get different sizes all the time, and that's where you get that irregularity. So I hope that helps you out. Oh, she knows that noise too. Cookie, that means that means sampling of the dough. Oh, oh. So, from Miss Callie and myself. You ain't nothing but a hand dog. Quiet all the time, y'all. We want to say. Healthy eating, be safe, and spend the sunshine. Bye-bye.